love it or loathe it, Apple's new liquid glass effect has been making headlines in the design industry. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a similar effect for the style of your Squarespace website. Now, to be super duper clear before we get into any custom code, I'm not talking about those unique animations that you'll see in the advanced liquid glass effect. What we're doing is using custom CSS to create a slightly opaque background that blurs the content behind a content block. We'll also be doing this for a list item and for a drop-down background. Definitely a creative way to apply a similar style to a Squarespace website using just CSS. Again, no animations are involved. I'm Becca from Inside the Square, and as always, the codes I'm about to share with you are listed underneath this video. But without further ado, I'll go ahead and share my screen and teach you exactly how to use these codes and how to customize them to make them uniquely yours. Let's get started. Here we are inside Squarespace, and on this page, I've got some content and different content blocks. I have a people section with different items, and I even have a drop-down folder. We're going to adjust the style of all of this using CSS. Now to reach our CSS panel, just hit the forward slash key on your keyboard and search for CSS. That's the fastest way to get there. Here I can click on the option and we'll be taken directly to our custom CSS panel. Now the code I'm about to share with you is listed underneath the video, but I'm going to paste it here and I'll zoom in on the screen so we can take a look at this code together. Now what we've done is we told Squarespace, if there is a content block on this website, I want you to make sure that we adjust the background so the background color is this slightly opaque white and blur anything behind that content block. Then give it a border, a little bit of padding, and a border radius to curve the corners. Now, all of these are super customizable, but I strongly recommend leaving these two exactly the way they are. Well, I guess you could adjust the background color opacity if you want to a little bit. Maybe you want it to be more transparent to decrease that number. To make it a little more visible, increase the number. You've got options here. But in my experience, that was the perfect value. Now, we also have the backdrop blur here. I set this to 5px. If you want the background to be a little bit more visible behind the content block, you can reduce this number or the exact opposite. If you want it to be more blurry, you can increase it. Super customizable and totally up to you. Personally, I thought 5px was perfect for this effect. Now, if we scroll down here, I want you to see these two content blocks here below. We've got this content block of text on the left and this accordion block on the right. This accordion block is still really interactive. I click on the arrow and it will expand, and we're still going to see that background effect happening behind the content. Now, I do want to mention this padding 5px. I added this to pull content away from the edges. If we remove this line of code, notice how the text and the lines in our accordion block, how everything is just right up against the edge of the content block right next to that border. Personally, I didn't like that look, so I added this 5px padding across all edges, but you can customize that or just remove it. I also have border radius 10px that curves the corners. If you remove it, it returns to 90 degree corners but I liked the effect of the curve there, so I went ahead and left that border radius. Now, if we scroll down here, we have a people section on this page. This is a people section, sometimes referred to as a list section, and these aren't made up of content blocks, so we need to use a separate code to target these. This code that I just pasted right here is going to take the list item and apply the exact same background effect, padding, and border radius, all that fun stuff, and we're going to make sure that the text updates to be a solid white on top of that background. Again, super customizable, just like the last one. Change the blur if you want it to be more blurry or less. Maybe remove the border, adjust the border radius, or even change the color of the font to a color that suits the style of your own website. Super customizable, but a different targeting system to make sure we target these items that are not content blocks. I also created a code for the drop-down folder. Check this out. I've got my standard drop-down folder here, but if we add some custom CSS, we can apply that same unique liquid glass look to the drop-down folder itself. I think it's really neat to see that when it's open here, not only are the background images blurry, but even the list item behind it is blurry. If we scroll up the page, you can see here, we're getting a really cool effect across all of our content here on this website when the drop-down folder is open. Definitely something interesting to explore explore, and I thought it was a cool code to share. Now, before I call this tutorial a wrap, I do want to address something really important. What if you only want the liquid glass effect for maybe this accordion right here, or just this headline text box? We can target individual items too, and let me show you how. 
I've just turned on a free Chrome extension that I love to use in my custom code. I'll link to it underneath this video. And this Chrome extension displays the block ID for all of the content blocks on my website. I'm going to copy the block ID for this title right here. And instead of starting my code with SQS block, I'm going to start it with the block ID. Now I've turned off the extension and we can see all of the other content blocks have gone back to normal. This unique block ID is the only one that's getting that effect. Turning the extension back on, let's grab the block ID for my accordion block here. We'll turn the extension off and here in my code, I'm just going to add a comma after the first block ID and then we'll paste the new one. Now the accordion block is getting that unique effect and if we scroll up here, the title still has it as well. You can target specific blocks of content on your Squarespace website using the block ID and again, I'll link to that free Chrome extension directly underneath this video. But a reminder, there are some items on your website that won't have a block ID. These list items don't have a unique ID, but they do have a selector that we used here on our code. Same for this drop down menu. There's no unique block ID for a drop down, but we can still get really creative if we know the unique code name to use in our Squarespace code. And again, you'll find all of these codes directly underneath the video. Let's go ahead and select save and we'll call this tutorial good to go. Underneath this video, you'll find a link to my original blog post with all of the codes that we just used to customize Squarespace. You'll also find a link to that free Chrome extension so you can target specific content blocks and customize them with your own code. I'm Becca from Inside the Square, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a like and let me know in the comments. And if there's something you'd like to learn about Squarespace, maybe something unique that you want to customize or a question you have that you just can't find an answer to, let me know in the comments. I'd love to help you make Squarespace uniquely yours. Thanks so much for watching, and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. Good news, Squarespacer. We finally have an AI that truly understands Squarespace. Meet Custom Cody. Built specifically for Squarespace users and trained on every nuance of the program, Custom Cody is your AI powered assistant for effortless expert level Squarespace customization. Available now at customcody.com.